Hi everyone. It's so good to gather with you. Thanks for taking a few moments out of your day to just spend it here for this moment of encouragement. You know, I believe with all my heart that as we look to God's Word, as we put our faith in who the Lord is and His Word as it speaks to us, His Word has a way of pouring right into our hearts and infusing us with the strength, the grace, the kindness, the mercy, the love, the peace, the joy, the encouragement we need to face every day with a sense of victory. And uh, it's so good to be able to just gather in this moment and uh, look to Him. You know, every day when I come into work, I drive about 20, 25 miles. Most of that is on the highway. I live in St. Charles County and I make that trek down Highway 40. And I do that every day in the morning and then I go back, of course, in the evening. And one of the invariable things that is hard not to notice is how, I'll just use the word, crazy it seems sometimes other drivers are. People that are in a hurry, anxious to get where they're going, people that drive at extraordinary uh, speeds uh, that you just think, really, is it really that important? Occasionally there are accidents. Occasionally there are problems that happen. Thankfully, the last year, it hasn't been too bad, but there was a year where I was stopped. It was on Father's Day a few years ago and was stopped for over three and a half hours just trying to get home because someone uh, wasn't paying attention, drove right into the side of the bridge. Thankfully, they, they survived, but, but there is such a temptation to allow ourselves to be distracted when we're driving. Do you know what the number one cause is of traffic accidents in America today? This is true here in St. Louis. It's true everywhere you go. It's not rain. It's not weather. It's not slick road conditions, though those can be problematic. That's not the number one cause. It's not uh, even just reckless driving. People that change lanes quickly and, and move too close to this side or that side, or, or it's, it's, that is not the number one cause. I'd be, I'd be tempted to think it was speeding, but it's not speeding. Speeding can be a problem. In fact, it's the third leading cause of accidents. It's not the number one, however. You might think that it's driving under the influence, and that certainly is a problem in our society. From either um, the use of uh, over-the-counter drugs or illegal drugs or alcohol, uh, they, those things, people become impaired, and then they drive under those conditions. And it's certainly problematic, but it's not the number one cause of car accidents today. Do you know what it is? It's driving while distracted, allowing other things to distract us. Of course, the number one distraction right here, our phones. Those things that people use to text and send messages and take pictures and make phone calls and, and do all the diff different things that people do to interact with the world and to communicate and to gather information. I don't know why we think that we can handle that as we drive. It is the number one cause of car accidents today. Why am I talking all about that? Well, just as driving becomes a hazard when we get distracted, there is a sense here in which as you and I try to navigate this world in which we live, we also can be distracted away from what is most important. It doesn't take long to look around at the world today and realize there are so many issues clamoring for our attention, and they are important issues. Of course, here in America, we will soon face, it's October as I, as I record this today, and we are just 20 some odd days out from a presidential election. And both sides are in the final throes of the campaign, and there's all kinds of mud slinging back and forth and accusations, and, and, and frankly, it seems like the world is going to end, no matter who you vote for, if you believe all the hype. Those concerns are valid but they're not the most important things. We also have the issue of civil unrest and injustice in our society. And there have been some horrific and tragic stories across our nation and right here in St. Louis. I don't want to minimize any of that. 
And there is a sense of outrage that comes from that. And we want to see justice done. And we want to see, um, um, you know, truth come out, regardless of where it lands. And those are important issues. They're not the most important issue. Of course, the, the major concern that we are still facing as a nation is this coronavirus and uh you know over what something like 210,000 people have died over 7 million people infected and that's just here in the u.s alone and there's this all this tendency to cast blame in one direction or another direction um but it just seems like trying to get some traction on a solution is slow and the concerns are many and they are valid concerns it is important of course not the most important. Now, how can you say that? You might ask me, Bert, what do you mean? What is the most important? Well, can I dare to suggest that what the world needs now more than any time is the love of God? It's the love of God. See, the love of God in our hearts helps us to hold on to one another instead of divide from one another in the midst of hard times. In the midst of great tragedies, it's the love of God that can fill our hearts and give us comfort. In the midst of injustice and disagreement, it's the love of God that not only helps us to find solutions that are needed, but really helps us to let go of anger as we walk in forgiveness. You know, the real answer to the heartache of the world is learning to offer forgiveness. But how can we do that unless we're filled with with the love of God. That doesn't mean that the causes of heartaches don't matter. It doesn't mean that that we're saying when we forgive that these things are okay. What we are saying is we're not allowing the pain of this world to replace the love that God wants to pour out through our hearts. I say all of that as a prelude to our scripture today, which simply comes from Colossians chapter 3, In verse 2, a short little verse that says this, Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. It doesn't mean that earthly things aren't important. It doesn't mean that earthly things don't have consequence. But there is a divine order. The only way to find solutions, the only way to really work at Uh, and solutions that are equitable and answers that really are remedies and and the way to bring people together is if we have our hearts set on things above. Devotion to God, his love for us, letting his love fill our hearts and letting that love flow through us to touch someone else. Someone once asked Jesus, what is the greatest command of all the scripture? What's the most important thing? And then, of course, Jesus answers from two verses, one out of the book of Deuteronomy, one out of the book of Leviticus. And he says, the greatest thing is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your strength. He says, and there's a second one, just like it, just as important. They go together. He says, and love your neighbor as yourself. Loving God, loving people from a genuine place of our hearts not just lip service not just saying words but but actions and heartfelt motivation that causes us to act in the most loving way even in the most difficult of situations it's like having to really focus on a hard journey as we drive down the road not allowing ourselves to be distracted by any things but staying focused on that center lane by staying alert to our surroundings and getting to our destination safely when we drive that's the most important thing as we navigate this life setting our mind setting our hearts on things above the love the goodness of god And letting that be what motivates us before anything else. Not allowing anything else to distract us from that. That's the hope of our scripture today. May we set our minds on things above, not on earthly things. May that verse give you some guidance and some hope and some encouragement 
I'm encouraged as we focus on the love of God, there are real answers to bring people together and to effectively deal with the heartaches, pains, and concerns of this life. With that in mind, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we choose to set our hearts and minds on you today. And we ask that you would fill us afresh with your presence. Jesus, I'm asking today that your love would fill us to overflowing, to help us know how to deal with heartache and anger and concern or worry or fret or frustration. Lord, uh, we don't want to be distracted by those things. We don't want to ignore those things, but we don't want to be guided by those, those feelings of concern. We want to be first and foremost guided by your love, your love that changes us from the inside out, your love that transforms us, and your love that we can give away to help touch someone else in their time of need as well. Work that in us today, I pray. In Christ's name, our precious Jesus, we, we ask. Amen. Thanks for being part of this discussion today. I'm, I'm hoping that I call it a discussion. I know it's one way from me to you, but I hope the things we talk about maybe allow you to talk to someone else today and to reflect on the scripture and to pass on to somebody else um, what you're experiencing as we turn to the Lord and as we share together. Thanks for watching. Here at Friendship Village, we're doing our best to show you these videos three times a day, starting at 4.30 in the afternoon. They follow at 8 o'clock at night and then repeat again at 8 o'clock in the morning. If you're watching online through YouTube, thanks for doing that. You can see our videos there anytime, day or night. Simply type in Encouraging Words with Burt Campbell on your, uh, on your search bar, on your computer bar there, and, or on your smartphone or whatever it is that you're using to access the internet. There are so many videos there uh, as well. By the way, if you're watching online, share these videos with someone else. Hit a like button and, uh, and help us spread the, the encouragement that we can all find together through the Word of God. God bless you today. Be encouraged in the Lord. We'll see you next time.